Hello everyone, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Jonas from the Maxon training team and today I'm joined by my colleagues and friends Noseman, Darren, Ellie and Dr. Sassi. And yeah, today 
we are going to talk a little bit about UVs. And yeah, before, the, uh, before we do that, I will take care of the housekeeping and um, you will see um, Ellie and Sussy vanishing like in the background. Um, so they are going to take care of your questions and uh, stuff that is going on in the chat. So thank you already for this, uh, Ellie and Sussy. That's very cool. Um, now let me share my screen. Here we go. And yeah, what you can see here is the events page at maxon.net. So if you go to maxon.net slash events or news events, you find um, this page where you can see all of the events that we're doing right now. There are even a few live events in there, which is cool. Live events are coming back, but also our uh, webinars are in here. So we've got um, Ask the Trainer today. That's today's session. Um, tomorrow we are going to have another session uh, of VFX and Chill. Then next week we are going to have Demystifying Post-Production on Monday. And uh, this month's uh, topic is Particles. And we also have, yeah, next week we have Max on Color on Thursday. All right, so let me go to this side here because this is something that we really like. It's the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel. And this is also the place where you can find the recordings of all the webinars we are doing. Um, so if you came in late, that's actually a very good thing to say in the very beginning. If you came in late, you can watch the recording. I'm going to repeat that in the end. But however, if you want to repeat anything here, uh, or if you want to rewatch um, the Maxim Training Team YouTube channel is the place to go. We have everything here. And also today we are going to talk UVs a little bit in, um, in the context of certification as well. So if you didn't notice, uh, we have a certification uh, like thing going on. And um, at maxon.net slash certification, you can um, get to this side. It's also under learn certification. And in here, um, you find the Cinema 4D Pro user certification and all the info for that and the trainer certification. And both certifications are based on the list of certification topics that you can find here. And as you can see, it's a long list. Um, and UV is, uh, UVs are one topic here. And this is what we picked out for today. So if you are um, interested in becoming a certified pro user, um, go through that list, um, see if you can find um, topics that you or areas that you don't know yet, um, yeah, just let us know um, and uh, get us inspired for, the, for one of the next Ask the Trainer sessions because what we want to do, um, um, yeah, these times is uh, we want to um, focus uh, our Ask the Trainer sessions on the certifications a little bit. Not next week, next week we're going to have a special, but um, in general. Right. and. Because we like that you are liking our um, shows, uh, we want to give away free t-shirts. So um, we have a link uh, to this merch shop and also a coupon code that you can uh, copy paste in um, at the very beginning and then you can order one t-shirt for free and you only have to pay for the shipping. But now let's talk about UVs because we are already there. We did the housekeeping, yay. So. I want to show you this picture. And the reason for that is uh, that I want to explain to you what UVs are. So when you want to um, create a texture for any 3D object, there needs to be a connection between the 3D object and a flat texture. So a good example to show that is if you have some sort of chocolate that is um, wrapped in aluminum foil and if that is somehow textured, that's even better. So what you see here is like a chocolate bunny, the 3D object here. And what happened here when you unwrap the foil and make it flat, this is the perfect example for UVs. So this is what you would, what the UV texture or the texture would like um, if you unwrapped the whole skin um, and like light flat on the ground. All right, so where can we find that inside of Cinema 4D? Let me jump into Cinema 4D actually. So here I have a cool example. It's um, the Artista from John Erdogan's uh, Latista movie. And he created that character. And as you can see, it's got a lot of textures on it. And um, yeah, to make sure that 
uh, the textures are sticking to the correct um, areas on the mesh, um, the, uh, the UVs have been unwrapped. And I want to show you how you can do that. First of all, I want to show you um, how you can view or yeah, see what the UVs are. Let me, let me switch to this one here so we have a bigger screen. OK, so what we see here are the UV tags. And if you double click them, nothing happens. But if you shift double click them, a window opens and this will show you the UVs. And once this is open, you can go to all the others and yeah, just have a look at what they look like, which is pretty cool. One thing that is also very interesting, if you multi-select a few of them, and I already knew that these three here are sharing the same UV space, um, you can pack them even in a way that m the UVs of multiple objects are packed into one UV space. I'm going to show you that later. All right, but yeah, now the question is, how can we unwrap um, stuff? Well, there are actually two ways of doing that. One, and that's the very fast way, is the automatic way. And then there is the manual way. Um, let's talk about the, um, the automatic way first. So let's go to the head. And let's have a look at the head's UVs here. So uh, we can see the face, and this is the nose, this is the backside of the face. Um, and let's say we don't have UVs. So I'm going to delete this UV tag. The easiest way to create UVs, and you don't even have to switch to the UV edit layout here, is to right click and go to material tags, and then set UVW from projection. And you click this little gear icon here. And then you would have multiple projection types that you can choose from. And the one we're going to choose is automatic packed UVs. We just hit OK. And you can see that it didn't unwrap everything. Because one thing that you need to keep in mind is that it's always unwrapping the active or the polygons of the active selections. Or if there is no active selection, then it's going to unwrap everything. So we have to either select everything or nothing. So I'm going to deselect everything and just do this again. So let's go to uh, material tags. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. And automatic pack UVs. And there we go. So this is what happens. Um, you can see everything is unwrapped. Um, it's packed um, in an efficient way. There is no overlap and so on, so you can start painting right away. Originally, this was planned to be something that is just allowing you to paint um, and not to do like final UV layouts. But there are some cases where you can create like really good UVs uh, with simply with a mouse click. Um, and those are the more, let's say, geometric ways. So I've, I brought another example here. Let, let me go to that box. That's an asset I, I created for some interactive um, um, for some interactive thing. And if you have a look at the UVs here, so let's have a look at this one's UVs, you can see that they are like pretty clean. And this is also the result of automatic packed UVs. So let me delete this one. And let's see where is that part actually. So it doesn't have UVs anymore. But if I right click here, I can still go to material tags, set UVW from projection, make sure automatic pack UV is enabled, hit OK. And now let's double click the UVs and you can see that they are pretty good. I mean, that's extremely simple geometry, but still um, it's saving a lot of time. However, now let me jump to the Artista here and let me also go to uh, options and deactivate materials and what I want to do is I want to unwrap the head um, manually now. So I go to the UV edit layout and well we could we could delete the UVs again but um, we can also just use them. So the first thing I usually do is I don't start with um, some Thing like that, but I try to start with something that is symmetrical or where you have like all UVs, um, all, all UVs polygons like in a, in a meaningful way, presented in a meaningful way. And this is what you can do here, down here in the projection 
tab of the UV manager. So here you can adjust the mapping. And there are different uh, mapping types from sphere over cylinder, cubic, box, and so on. And one of them is flat. And I like flat because typically you just model something in a symmetrical way when it's a character, for example. And um, the flat projection gives you like a view onto the object, but from the front, like the orthogonal view. Um, and this is usually how I start because then I can see the head here and yeah, now let's start unwrapping this guy. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna solo the head for now. And so when it comes to UV unwrapping, you need to create cuts um, in the mesh to unwrap the UVs in a meaningful way. Um, and that means when you have cuts, you have to be aware of those cuts and um, they are a little bit more like tricky to paint on because you need to, uh, uh, to do 3D projection painting and so on. It's possible, that's, it's also no problem, but you need to be aware of that. And that's why usually, uh, let's say I um, enable these objects again, um, we place these seams in areas that we don't see as much anyway. So we would never um, do like a cut through the face unless it's really necessary. Here it will be necessary because the nose is so big. But um, for example here, uh, instead of cutting here in the middle, or cutting right through the middle, we can cut here beneath the hair objects, for example. So let me quickly show you how the workflow is. So basically you go to edge mode and then you create an edge selection and you can use all of the selection tools that you know. Um, loop selection is quite good for that. Path selection is quite good for that. Also, um, the mirror selection command is very valuable in this workflow. And now let's just unwrap this guy. Um, so one thing that many people don't know, if you are in the move tool uh, or rotate or scale, you can simply select one edge. Let's select this one. And then you hold down uh, control and shift. And then you click another edge and it will create an edge selection that is using the, the shortest path from the original uh, selected element or component to this place. So we just created like this. And then we can just hit UV unwrap, right? And it will create something like that. And this is already something we can work with. Um, however, now this is like an iterative, uh, iterative uh, process. We can now start like, um, yeah, cutting out other things. We don't necessarily need this to be like one island. And I would just show you um, how I would um, unwrap this thing. So I'm gonna use the loop selection and let's uh, create a loop here. And then I'm gonna hit UV unwrap again. And you can see that it's now less uh, distorted here. The main part is now less distorted. Uh, we have a problem that we now have overlapping polygons. So let me just use the move tool, for example, and double click here. This will um, select the whole UV island and just move it to the side. Then we can move this to the side and, and so on. Right, so now we have this inner mouth part as a separate part. Now let me do the same with the nose. So let's create a selection here for the nose. And in this case, I'm gonna use the path selection, just create some sort of path along here. We don't need this one, but let's go here and up to there. The cool thing is that we always, as long as we have something symmetrical, we don't need to select the other side. So now would be a good um, time to just go to select and mirror selection. And by default, it's just adding to the selection. So now I have a fully, um, a full loop here and I can just unwrap again. And yeah, for some reason, the islands here are just being created like in the middle. So let's move this to the side and yeah, let's just continue. So that's basically the, the process. 
And so now, for example, I could um, detach the ears here. That's also a cool example of um, how you can use the, the uh, loop selection tool because the loop selection tool does not just necessarily select loops. You have these checkboxes here. You can stop at selections, you can stop at non-quads, and you can stop at poles. So poles are all points that have more than four um, edges attached to them. So what I can do here is I can, for example, let me go here. Maybe, maybe we need that. Well, let me see. Maybe that's also not the right um, tool for that. So stop at poles. We can just click here and let's see what we are selecting. So that's, that's good. That's already helping us. And then we're going to select this one, this one, and let's see what this one does. That's not a good one, but this one here is good. And yeah, this way we can just select stuff and um, yeah, be quick about that. So now I'm going to switch to the path selection tool. The shortcut is UM and just add it to the, to the selection by holding down shift as I create the selection. As before, I'm just going to um, select and mirror the selection. So now I've got the other side selected as well. Hit UV unwrap again. Did it work? Let me double check. That didn't work for some reason. Let me have a look at the settings. We have settings here. So restrict your polling on selection. That's okay. Okay, okay, okay. So now it worked. Okay. And yeah, we can also, instead of just moving the stuff around, we can go to the UV packing and just apply some packing here. That should do it. All right. Yeah, and now we can continue with that. So the last thing I'm going to do here because of uh, time restrictions is I'm just going to create another cut here in the middle of the nose. So let's um, hit UM again and just create a path selection down here and hit UV unwrap. Oh, maybe let me go to this one. That was a mistake. Undo. Does it work like that? UV unwrap. Oh, something is going on here. Ultra realign. That's interesting. Let me let me see. So here, this is usually the default. Now it's working, okay. Right, so yeah, I'm just going to, to use the packing here to, to pack these. So whenever you uh, unwrap all of the separate parts, you can choose one of the UV packing um, uh, algorithms here to, to pack everything together. And there are three of them. Bounding box is um, like an older one that is really using the bounding box, which uh, is coming with multiple problems when it comes to efficient, uh, efficiently use the, the space that you have available because it's using the bounding box. So whenever you have, uh, let me do this, um, whenever you have um, a UV island, it's really creating a rectangle around that and within that rectangle, there is no other UV island allowed. The fastest one is rasterized. That's the one that is recommended when you have, uh, when you want to unwrap an object that has got a lot of um, UV islands, for example, and the most accurate one um, is geometric. Right, so now let me show you a few things that, um, that are also cool. So the first thing is that if you want to like redo one of the parts, like this one here, for example, you can totally do that. Just create a selection of that and then you go to projection and let's set this to flat and let's say, okay, we want to use another approach here. Um, and we're gonna use the one uh, that I told you earlier where we have like a cut here and a cut down here. 
and we're going to use the loop selection for that again in edge mode. So let's create a loop selection. We're going to stop at selections. We're going to uh, stop at poles and we're going to create one line here, then another one here and another one here. So you can take advantage of these poles, um, which is quite cool. I could mirror the selection, but in this case, I'm faster when I do that manually. Yes. Oh, I already did. A pole is um, a point that has more than four um, edges attached to it. So we need this one here as well. And now we can, we can unwrap again. So let's unwrap. Let's make sure that we're using the polygon selection. We can also, in theory, leave this in edge mode. And let's see that we are restricting this to the polygon selection. That also works. And let's hit OK. And you can see that we now created two um, polygon islands. So the interesting one, or the, the first one, is this one here. And I want to align it so that it's really straight. Um, and one way to do that is by simply selecting one of the uh, edges that is either like horizontal or vertical. And then you can hit the align UV islands command here and it will just, um, yeah, align it. So yeah, let me, let me move this island away here and let's have another look at this one here. By the way, all of the commands here, like, or all of the tools like move, scale and rotate. Well, that was scale and that is rotate. Um, they work. And also there is a nice tool that is called UV transform that allows you not only to move scale and rotate, but to do that like in some, let's say, uh, sort of Photoshop fashion. So if you hold down shift, for example, you can, oh, you can non-uniformly scale, or if you hold down command, you can do something like this, or we can um, hold down alt, which will just um, yeah, scale like that or hold shift and alt. Then we have um, rotation here and we can even adjust the anchor point. So we could adjust this to be here or we could even use snapping. So let me uh, enable snapping. And I think by default point snapping is activated. We can snap this one here to some other point of the geometry and then uh, uh, rotate around this point, which is or can be quite handy. All right, now that we have this one, let me go back to flat projection again and I'm gonna show you something else. So one thing that I found very useful, especially in this case, because the face is going, is pointing a little bit upwards. Let me deactivate snapping as well. So instead of projecting from the front, I want to project from sort of this angle. This might give me a better, a better result. And one way to do that is by using the interactive mapping. So you can start interactive mapping here. And the way it works is you start and then a texture tag is, uh, will be created here. And in here, you can adjust the, um, the projection you can set this to flat, to spherical, or whatever you want. We need flat. And we are also in texture mode automatically here. And now let me zoom out a little bit. So what we can do now is we can just go to the scale tool, scale this down. We can rotate this like so. And you can see that, that our UVs are adjusting. So let's use this as the starting point for uh, the next steps. And uh, the way to stop this is by hitting the stop interactive mapping button. There we go. And now from here, we can unwrap this a little bit further. So let me, let me create some more cuts here. I'm going to go to um, edge mode and I'm going to select these three and again, select mirror selection and I'm going to unwrap. Let me make sure that only these polygons are selected. Okay, unwrap and there we go. So now it has been unwrapped, but it's also 
been relaxed in a way that we don't really know if some of the proportions within this UV island are still the same. So let me undo this and let me show you how we can make sure that uh, we keep some of the proportions in there. And the way we can do that is by switching to points mode. And then we can just select a few points. Um, ideally, I select points on the symmetry axis, but you can also select other points. You can also paint these points. Um, it doesn't matter. So in my experience, it was in this case better uh, when I just um, selected these points here, a little, uh, a few down here, a few up here, and then you add UV pins. So this is the pins section. You can add UV pins. You will see them indicated by the red uh, dots here. And this means whenever you have pins and you will unwrap those points here will keep their position like in relation to each other um, as soon as you hit unwrap. And this is a very um, interesting and um, important concept. So let me unwrap this and let me first bring up the settings again. So we restrict this to the polygon selection. We use the pins for the UV relax and we auto align. Let's keep auto align enabled and I hit okay. And this means that it will um, uh, yeah, unwrap this. Uh, it will keep these points in uh, their relation. Um, but in theory, it could have happened that this whole thing would be now like 45 degrees um, rotated or so. So let me undo this. And when I untick auto realign, these will uh, stay in their same position. And now we have yeah, symmetrical UVs here. We can clear the UV pins. We can also like add stuff or add UV pins. We can simply like add a few more Then we say add UV pins and we can also remove UV pins and clear them all, for example. So there are a lot of possibilities. And in the end, I would always um, yeah, pack everything together. So let's do some packing again. We choose geometric and pack this together. That's great. In the packing, we have some options. We can um, ask the packing to preserve the orientation, which is really cool. Um, we can stretch to fit, but this would like really stretch the UVs. I don't recommend to do that. We can equalize the island sizes. And this is also very good because it will keep them in the correct size compared to each other. And we can also overlap identical and mirrored islands. So um, actually, I don't want that necessarily. So another thing that is cool with packing, and I'm going to show you this before I show you uh, some of the other things that um, that I want to show, but I'm, I want to be quick about that other stuff because I have a look at the clock and um, from now I can already tell you that we're going to overrun a little bit. Um, so one thing that I really want to show you is um, what I actually showed you earlier that you can have multiple objects UVs in the same UV space. So let's select the hands here. And you can see that we have the hands UVs here. It's four islands. And we've got those UVs here. But we can pack them together. If I hit apply now, you can see that they are being packed into the same UV space. So you could say that everything that is skin uh, should be in one material or in one texture and now you could paint the head and the the hands in the same uh, texture which is a pretty cool uh, thing so this way you can group uv islands now let's have a look at some of the options that we have when it comes to the view first of all so my screen is a little bit small here but let me make this bigger we have this textures um, menu here and we can enable a UV map. And yeah, this will enable this thing here. And this way we can see where each, um, where each uh, of these sections really is on the geometry. And this is a quite cool thing for orientation. Right, let me deactivate that again. And let me go to the view menu because the view menu is also very important. Let me undock this and let's place it here. So 
some of these things um, that you see here can be filtered in some way. You can also find these filters or overlays um, in the UV settings. So when you go to mode in the attributes manager and go to UV settings, you get this one here. And you can like have no boundaries. This will just show the mesh, but seams are pretty good because they are also, uh, they can also be seen like here on the mesh. This is uh, supported that you can see the seams. And then there is UV connectivity, which is not supported um, in the viewport, but you can see it here um, that there is a color coding that is telling you that these colors that b um, belong together or the colors that are the same um, are indicating that this is one UV seam. So here you can, for example, see that the orange, uh, the orange one, uh, which is here and here and here and here and here, um, is also here. So you can already see that these two islands somehow belong together, which is sometimes really um, helpful. All right, let me um, go back to UV seams. Then down here, we have another section that is really important. So the first one is lines. We can show or not show the lines. Um, we can, um, yeah, um, make an indication for overlapping polygons. So let me just show you this by moving one polygon island on top of the other one. And now you can see that this is red. So here with lines, well, it's, it's just, yeah, no, no indication. With overlapping polygons, we have this and we can uh, immediately see that um, we have overlapping polygons. Then we have filled polygons. Filled polygons is also a very interesting one. So what is this showing us? There are two uh, directions. So the UV islands can point away from you or they can point towards you. So when something is pointing towards you, it's just gray. That means that um, this, well, if this would be, or this is the real face. So if we select the right cheek or polygons at the right cheek, they will be here on the right cheek as well. But sometimes those are flipped. For example, this part here, which is the back of the head, right? And now if I select um, a polygon here on the right side, you can see that it's selected on the left side here in the UV editor. And this is what this is indicating us. So let's, let's say we want to paint a, a tattoo here on the back side of his head and it has got some text in it. If we do that, the text would be um, like reversed um, on his head. Um, we would have to reverse it here to make it look correct here. But that's usually not what we want to do. So um, one way how to, or yeah, the way how you can um, remedy that is by simply selecting those islands and then you either hit mirror U or mirror V and that's it. Let's just do this with, uh, with all of these islands like so and there you go. Right. Then we have multicolored islands, which is also cool because this helps you identify in the uh, 3D view and also in the UV mesh, which polygon island or which UV island is belonging to which part of the geometry. So here you can clearly see this is red. Here we've got red. And back, he uh, back here we have the, the yellow one, which is this one. So this is giving you an indication um, of where a UV polygon is. And then we have distortion. And distortion is also a very, uh, a very good one because um, it's showing you even on the mesh where you have very distorted um, polygons in the, UVs, uh, in the UV set compared to the, um, to the original geometry and yeah, uh, where they are stretched and where they are uh, like compressed. So, when they are red here, that means that, uh, well, I believe it means that they are bigger uh, than in the original. And uh, when they are blue, I think they are, um, uh, I think they are compressed. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I think it's that way around. So how can we tackle that? So here, for example, you can see the ears, which are yeah, very compressed here. No, red is compressed. Red means there is a lot of density here. And blue means that they are stretched. Here you can see that because we've got this 
like circle here. So what I said in the beginning was wrong. All right, how can we remedy that? Simply by creating new cuts. Let me do this with this uh, island here, which is the inner part of the mouth, but this is uh, the fastest one to show to you how you can, how you can solve that. In this case, simply do a polygon uh, selection, like a loop selection through this one and just uh, UV unwrap again. So you've got two islands and now you can see, let me go back to, to polygon mode. Now you can see that these are not as stretched anymore. So there is, there is no red anymore. Of course you can, um, um, you can modify them further. One interesting thing here is that the stretching is always uh, referring to all polygons in the UV space. So um, these are now way too big compared to the main um, UV island here. So if I want to get rid of this stretching here, I can simply apply the um, UV packing again with equalized uh, island size. So I apply that and now you can see that these two islands that we just created, this one and this one, um, that they are now gray and all of the red and blue areas are just very subtle. All right, so that was my 15 minutes part, guys. <laughs> so who wants to go next? Yes, of course. Do you want to share your screen while you're doing that or do you want me to, to navigate around? You're not sharing your screen yet. Yes. Wait, for some reason, for some reason, uh, we cannot hear the active speaker. Uh, give me, give me a second. Um, people cannot hear you, Darren. So let me, let me, let me, let me go. Where is it? So now you oh. should hear Darren. Okay. How's my audio now, everybody? Can you hear me? I'm hoping so. Um, let us know in the chat and then I will jump into my spiel. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I'm going to switch to your screen in the meantime. So here we go. Okay. All right. Can they hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, everyone can hear you now. All Perfect. right. Excellent. We good? Yep. All right. Cool. So do it. Um, so the un the unwrapping with like you uh, that uh, Jonas was showing um, is awesome. You select an edge, you click unwrap. Um, and it's a very iterative way to unwrap. Um, but the, you know, the loops, the edges that you include or exclude in that unwrap can give you very different results. So you may want to try a couple of different things. Now, if Jonas was showing sort of more of an explored exploration, um, or if you just wanted to explore different things and you want to be able to take a UV island and put it back into its place. And sometimes you get models um, or you're in the process of modeling, you create some bad UVs that you need to fit into a specific area of your UV. And this scene we're looking at is one such example. I have this turnstile, which this is this is very old school. This is I did this for like a Half Life mod, like whatever, twenty years ago. I don't know, um, but this model has um, these UVs, and 
you know, I've, I've exaggerated the issue here uh, where there is this one UV island that is out of place in the uh, in the UV space. And, you know, maybe it's been added after uh, some other stuff has happened. But anyway, how do we what's you know, how do we fix this? Well, and this brings me to my second uh, point, and that is, you know, the Cinema 4D um, and uh, and body paint has a lot of really great commands all over the place um, for some quick tasks. And uh, this is one of those. So I'm going to go to, you know, polygon mode. And I actually have selected uh, this island that I want to, I want to fix here, you know, it, and there's actually a whole bunch of overlapping UVs, right? We got these two huge UVs in the middle, and then there's this tiny little sort of very low res fillet or bevel. Um, and I need everything to snap into that place. So what we can do is with that selection, take advantage of this UV Terrace command. And, <laughs> and let's remake the selection from scratch. So I'm going to select these two UVs, and then I'm going to grow the selection U, Y. And then here, I'll zoom in so you guys can see this. And then UI, UI, UI. No, that's too much. I'll undo. And then this selection, I am going to do the UV Terrace. And then it just snaps it right in there. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of really great commands in um, Cinema 4D and Body Paint to work with you, your UVs. So I encourage you guys to explore them. Um, because we're short on time, um, I'm not going to show you some of the commands that work with both the textures and the UV simultaneously. But that's a hint for you um, to check out the remap commands and uh, and some others in the uh, in the texture menus in Cinema 4D and Body Paint. And um, with that, I think I'm going to hand it off to Thanasis because he has a lot of um, really cool stuff that I want to see. <laughs> Thanks. So, I have cool stuff. Oh, interesting. Uh, I had no idea. Okay. So uh, I just want to show this dragon. So this is, first of all, I'm going to digress from my original presentation. Um, no co tie. And this is what you want, isn't it? You want to be able to get the polygon grid exported and, and all. My screen. My screen doesn't have it. Sorry, I wasn't audible to the audience. Um, I see the dragon. You can see the dragon. Now let's switch to the dragon. Let me get rid of that. There we go. There we go. So you can see my screen, right? Oh, yeah. So, so I'm going to go against uh, everything I've written down. I'm going to show some stuff. But now I'm just going to reply. Um, no Ko Tai is uh, asking. How do we? So this is just a, an asset I bought off the internet. It's really nice. It has a lot of animations, and I just like to showcase it because I oh, yeah, didn't. Nice. I I paid money and I got it. So uh, <laughs> to the UV edit, and uh, basically the question is, and this is an interesting thing. So I have this uh, UV grid, and uh, uh, Noko Tai, if you may, you want to make a bitmap. A bitmap out of this is that correct if you can reply uh, while i'm showing this hopefully not wrong answer uh having misunderstood your question and um let's see how we can we can do this this requires we can uh let's say you have this and you want to go to photoshop and know what every polygon is so here's the process First of all, make sure your model is selected so we can see what we're doing here. You need to activate uh, a paintable texture. So go to your materials down here. Now, this is these little crosses, for anyone who doesn't know, this means that the material is not paintable. And the paintable aspect applies to uh, body paint. Now, let's create a standard material. Let's 
activate it, I'm going to call this uh, nose man is smart, right? Just like writing random things. Double click on this and you will see it's a normal material. Just take, uh, remove everything except for the color. Now, the second thing is I need to add to this uh, an image that Cinema 4D can control. Now, I did click on that little X and now this material is paintable. But I want to create a channel to paint in because now we just have the default color. There's no empty channel in here. And what you're seeing is uh, partially uh, what body paint needs in order to work. So you go to your material, sorry, the texture, and you go and add a color channel. And it's going to ask you, OK, I'm going to create an empty image. Uh, you set the resolution, whatever resolution you want. I'm going to talk about resolutions and aspect ratios in a bit. RGB, colors, gray, red, whatever color you want it to be. And you press OK. Now, you can load something from disk. If you have an, uh, a Photoshop file or a TIFF file, or anything like that, you can load it. But here, let's create a new texture. So now what's happening here, you can see underneath, I have this material, uh, which underneath has a color. And in this color, we have this image. There you go. This is a, a, a reddish image. And I want to find a way to put all these lines on that image. So uh, if you go to layers in the UV edit, these are the object manager layers. But if I switch to paint and go to layers, these are the painting layers. So open your material, select it, and all the layers will appear. You can actually add a new layer on top if you wish. Uh, uh, body paint is sort of a Photoshop inside Cinema 4D, just in case you didn't know that. But we can do layers, we can save uh, different formats and so forth. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to the UV layout. That was just another digression of a dig digression. I want to go and select all the polygons I want to sort of stamp on that image. And of course, I need to make sure that my image is applied to my object. OK. And now with this image select with this uh, layer selected and all the polygons selected, you go to the I think it's the layer outline polygons. Boop. And there you go. Now, if you go and save this, so save uh, texture as uh, TIFF, Photoshop, whatever you want to do. Let's make it uh, Photoshop. Press OK. I'm going to put it on the other screen just in case there's something I don't want you to see. I usually don't have things, but that makes me seem more important. Uh, <laughs> you name it grid. You're just making yourself more interesting. I don't think I need to be more interesting, but no. you know, uh, humility, <laughs> it, always helps. it always helps. Humility is not one of my strong points. And this is Photoshop. There you go. This is your Photoshop file. You can define the line thickness and all that, but that is the way you can go. And if you do it on a separate layer, so if instead of, uh, if you were here and you went to uh, paint layers, uh, material, paint, uh, layers and you added a new layer on top of this, you can imprint this on a, another layer without disrupting your background. So I, that col the color of those lines, that's based on the foreground color. Is that right? Exactly. So you have the colors here, foregrounds, backgrounds and all that. I mean, go and watch that. We have quite a few tutorials on University of Body Paint because body paint hasn't changed significantly over the last six and a half billion years, I think. And uh, yeah, it survived uh, the dinosaur, uh, the, the impact of the meteor. Anyway, um, so you can go and you can uh, change uh, the lines and, and all that and uh, whatnot. So uh, I know you owe me eternal gratitude, uh, no Kotai, uh, and I accept it uh, beforehand. Now, let's go and see some other things. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go to my list now because I totally lost my train of thought. Okay. Yeah, I, I will Let jump in. And, uh, uh, so the, it's not just the color uh, for, for this grid that is um, um, the foreground color. It's also like the, the brush thickness that is defining the, um, uh, the, the line thickness. Isn't it like that? Yeah. Brush or something. I'm not. Yeah, um, I'm I think too, it was the the, the brush. Important to deal with that right now, is, yeah. which is another way to say that I don't know off the top of my head. So, okay. anyway, you need to understand when I speak nose man what I mean. Okay, um, it should be a lot simpler than your worker. It's not a workaround. That's how it, it it's supposed to be. 
It's to keep you on your toes, right? If it's too simple, press one button, everyone's going to be lazy, right? Uh, so you're very welcome. Now, let me go back to my list. I lose my train of thought very easily. Um, okay, let's talk about some fundamentals of, um, of, you know, what UVs are. We see this nice seamless image. It goes around nicely, rounded and so forth. But in order to achieve this, uh, I had to cheat. And uh, why did I have to cheat? Well, one thing, well, two things. Uh, UVs as a technology, and this has nothing to do with Cinema 4D, UVs suffer from two limitations. You have to either sacrifice continuity or you have to sacrifice distortion or you have to sacrifice both. But there is no way, unless you're projecting on a flat surface, to avoid one or the other or both. So let me show you uh, what I mean about this. I think I have the file ready here uh, because I'm too lazy to make a cube. Uh, distortion seems, there you go. Have a, not this one, <sighs> this one. Okay, and I have a cube. And uh, this has square sides. And by default, a cube, when you make it editable and then go to the UV edit, what a cubic, uh, a, a cubic projection, because a projection is nothing more than an automatic way to make uh, UVs, is every polygon is on top of each other. So we have six polygons on top of each other here. So if I go here and start selecting these and moving them out, uh, I just want to select one. So I'm going to move uh, this one out and then the other one out. And you can see if I go here, we have, uh, we're going to end up with six squares on top of each other. Now, um, let me uh, undo. Someone would say then, okay, do you know what I want to do? I want to stretch this one tile over the whole cube, single tile, not make copies of this tile, of the whole cube, so that everything is seamless. All the numbers align, the, the fives are above the sixes, and they're next to the, you know, uh, the five has a four next to it and a six next to it, and, and so forth. You can't do that. You cannot, literally, you cannot do that. And the best way, which is similar to uh, Jonas's first image when he showed that aluminum foil over the egg, is get some aluminum foil, cut it square, get any object like a sphere, and try and put the aluminum foil on the sphere without having any wrinkles. You can't do that. In order to do something like that, you need to use a plastic material, something like um, cling film, so you can stretch it over something. And then you're going to have some edges, some bits uh, hanging from the sides. You need the scissors and start cutting them. So basically, you cannot do what my request is. It's not possible. Zero, finished, done. There is no argument about that. The technology does not support something like that. So how can I create the appearance of continuity? So in terms of uh, the cube, uh, that is fairly simple. I'm going to go to the predefined projections down here, go to projection and say, I want a, a box and wrap. So now each polygon is not on top of each other. Each UV polygon is in a different part of the UV tile. And that means that I'm not going to have overlapping parts of the model showing through one of these polygons. The problem with this, though, is that we get some cutting here. So you see we have a bit of a five over here and we have the two over here. Um, and what you need to do if you want to align fully these grids within the squares and create that beautiful thing I did over here somewhere. Oh, here it is. So here's a, the final product of what I'm going to show. Look at this. We have roundings. Everything is matching, but the numbers are not matching. So how do we do that? Well, number one, I want to be able to see my material in here. And it's, uh, I had it loaded earlier. Usually these are empty. You need to go and load your material from here, open texture, or you need to go and activate your material. If you activate your material, then whatever is inside here is going to appear in your UV uh, grid. So just keep that uh, keep that in mind. And I think there's a way to fade it out or something like that. If someone remembers how to do that, please let me know. Um, and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take these uh, polygons and scale them because they're squares so that uh, each and every one of these squares occupies 
something that is around the white line to make it nice. And the best thing to do that is the UV gizmo, as I call it. And I think I need to make this a bit smaller. And the, the best way to go about this is to find one square. Let's align it here. Let's align it right there. And I'm going to make it slightly smaller. This is not an exact science, right? This is art. Let's bring this over here. And you can see the representation on this side. So you have the, the ability to sort of fine tune what you're visualizing. But there you go. I'm not going to spend too much time. As you can see now, I've brought it close enough so the white lines are across the edges. So this is one way to fake continuity. Although uh, if you had a texture that didn't have lines, you would see the break over here. And again, we're talking about UVs. There are other ways of applying noises and abstract fractals and all that um, using all sorts of uh, blending methods and triplanar and stuff like that. Now, the next question is, all right, this is simple. What do I do if I want my cube to have some rounding? How do I do that? Because with rounding, yeah, the tool can be used in the view. So edge, select the cube, select all. Oh, come on, which two? I had some other two. Yeah, I had the UV gizmo. When you have the UV gizmo selected, all right, so I had the UV gizmo tool. And if I click here, it says this tool cannot be used in 3D view. I have to go to the move tool and then right click and say, let's bevel this, right? Let's, so let's give it a, a nice bevel. Here. Now, what I want to do is I want a midline, uh, a middle line here. So I'm going to put at least one uh, subdivision. Uh, I, you can put any uh, odd number. I'm going to keep it at three. And I want this line so I can align my white line of the texture with these edges here. Now, what's happened here is that, look at this new unwrap. I'm going to go to empty canvas and go here. Uh, this The fading for that um, UV backgrounds um, is actually not in the material display, but in the UV display uh, where it shows the UV grid, you have the opacity slider. Yeah, which may, uh, it's somewhere. Anyway, don't yep. worry. Very good. The, in in order for me now to create this sort of configuration, I need to do a couple of things. Number one, I need to split out each and every one of uh, these, let's say, sides uh, from their middle. And the reason is I want the symmetrical little part. I want to get the this bunch of polygons. Let me go and show you what I mean. I want these polygons to be one patch, but these polygons to be another patch, and these to be another patch, and so forth. And the easiest way to do that is get your edge tool, uh, deselect everything, go to the move tool, because uh, you can double click and select edges, and start double clicking, shift, double click, shift, double click, and uh, put it on hidden lines. It's a bit easier to see. I'm selecting my edges. Now you can see the white seams. And I'm a very irritable person. I don't want to see the white seams. So because I'm going to do some uh, refactoring of, of uh, the uh, UVs, um, I'm going to go select all the polygons and go and do a frontal projection just to get rid of all seams. The frontal projection will give you a projection of your mesh that empty canvas, press H, that is representative of what the camera view is, right? So frontal projection will give me this, or frontal projection will give me this. So that's a frontal projection. It's the best way to, to get rid of all your scenes. So let's go back to the edges. I'm going to go and select all these boundary edges. And mind you, UV uh, wrangling is a highly manual thing. You have to go and make selections. You have to go and prepare your cuts and all that kind of stuff. So there is no shortcut. Well, maybe there is, but uh, I can't think of one right now. But overall, it's quite a laborious uh, process. So double click. Let's see if I forgot anything. I usually forget one that's going to... No, I didn't forget anything. Surprise. So now that I've selected these edges, I can go and do a UV unwrap. Because what this is going to do is just going to unwrap based on these edges. Now, you can see that these are not aligned. There are some ways you can. we're going to fix it. I can press UV and wrap a few times. And that will uh, do it. But I can also align. So let's go and align these. Uh, you can click an edge and you can say uh, uh, align UV islands. 
So you can select uh, all these top edges here, 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 align UV islands, and it's going to go and straighten the island based on the orientation of that. So now everything is nicely aligned, but I still have one more thing to do, and I'll show you why I have one more thing to do. So let's uh, bring this up again, and let's go here and uh, put gross shading lines. The problem with this is that, and we're going to see it, let's go, where can we see this? Nicely uh, visible. I need to put uh, one of these right on the seam. So I'm going to select all these, go very, very, very close. Let's go over here. I'm going to go and place this over here. I'm looking at this little part. Look at that. I'm placing it here right on the line. I'm going to go to my polygons, double click on this, press move and move it right on the line. Double click, move it right on the line and double click and move it right on the line. Now, I don't know where I am, so I'm gonna go to my polygon selection, select these polygons, and now if I press S here, it's gonna zoom, uh, it's gonna frame those polygons. Where are, oh, there they are, right here. So what you're seeing here is that I'm losing my white lines. I'm losing them because this portion of the image doesn't have any polygon coverage. So what do I need to do to bring these white lines to appear right here and bend with us? Well, I need to bring my UV uh, points to these uh, the positions, but there is an easier method I can use. I can go to each polygon island and I can do a rectangularize. I actually had to say this a thousand times to be able to say it in one breath. It's a very hard word to say. So I'm going to undo, go very close. I also love the way you said it. Rectangular rise. I, I love that. Yeah. From now so on, look at I this. will always recall that sound when I hit that button. Rectangular rise. Okay. So what this does, it requires a grid that's made from an equal na uh, number of uh, horizontal and vertical, uh, uh, equally subdivided uh, quads. And I do this, it does this. So let's go here. Rectangular rise. Rectangular rise. I don't think it works on multiple islands. Double click, rectangularize, rectangularize. There you go. So these are all rectangularized. Right? Is that the word? Rectangularized. And now, if I go back to those little polygons here and move this on my line, I can use snapping as well. Uh, if I press Shift S, I can go and I can take this and snap it here. Did I press Shift S? I didn't press Shift S. Now I did. Double click, click here. There you go. And let's find these. Oh, of course, these are not all adjacent. It's just two because my islands are out of place. But uh, I'm going to go and place them in the in the right position. So these uh, three polygons here, it appears that one of them is uh, over here. <laughs> oh, I apologize for this. Let me get rid of this. Let's go and find this one. Where's this one? I need to turn this off. Empty canvas. Where is it? I've lost my... There we go. It's this one over here. So double click. I'm going to bring this over here. And I'm going to just, just going to show you with, with this one. Right, look at this. I'm going to go here. Move this over here. And that's the wrong side, of course, because, yeah, it's the wrong side. It's on the other side. Ah, terrible. Get this. Rotate. Press Shift. And rotate, rotate. Ah, I want the rotate. There you go. That's a rotate. That's it. I did it. And this is ha basically what you need to do. Now, I was messing up because half my brain was thinking, half my brain was speaking, and speaking uh, over takes my thinking abilities for some odd reason. And uh, you just need to place them now, these UV polygons, so that they are right on the line. And automatically, you get this. And uh, the example is, here it is. If I go to this one here, where I've placed everything properly, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here, and you look that's exactly what I did, and everything is in its place, and we have this amazing uh, 
seamless sort of uh, bending. But this just is an illustration of all the, the steps you need to go through when you're trying to do something which is slightly outside of the uh, standard in order to have continuity plus minimum distortion. So you I'm surprised there isn't a box or cubic um, option that would work with this geometry. Well, let's go and see what this will do with uh, the automatic modes. I've selected everything. Let's do frontal first, and let's get the cubic two. And you can see the, it, it, it distance them. It, it creates the distance. That's what I did originally, and then I had to go and fix them. But mm -hmm. if you're wondering why we don't get a straight edge here, well, that's because the actual... Uh, yeah area the geometry itself the area this yeah. polygon is smaller than this one right so yeah. it needs to be by definition smaller than this but then we lose what we're trying to make and the computer that the software doesn't know what we're trying to make it's just trying to keep things smooth anyway so um let me talk about a few other uh gotchas uh which i believe are quite um important so let's take uh this for example okay because sometimes uh, we know that primitives have their own UVs, automatic UVs. We can't go and edit them, right? They're defined uh, by the primitive itself. So someone would say, okay, I'm going to go here and remove, uh, I don't want caps. I just want the surface of the cone. That's fantastic. And here's the UV grid applied on this. And now I want to unwrap this in a different configuration. So you make it editable. Excellent. And then you say, okay, uh, let me go and unwrap it. What this is, uh, I think it has scarred generations of Cinema 4D users. Uh, but there's a very simple explanation to this. Uh, our unwrapping algorithms uh, have an issue with uh, points that occupy the same space. So up here, if you go the cone particularly, if I get these points, what you will see is that these up here are not triangles. I don't want this. I want this. These are not triangles. These are quads where the two top points are overlapping each other. So the way to avoid this kind of thing is sometimes you need to go and optimize your model first. There you go. So now the quads have been turned into triangles. So now I can go and do my uh, usual uh, series of uh, things, uh, deselect everything, do a frontal projection, and then I will say, all right, where do I want the cut? I'm going to cut it down here. And you do a... UV and wrap, and there you have it. And uh, by cutting, you're allowing this to relax to a point where it avoids as much distortion as it can at sacrifices uh, continuity in this particular case. So uh, this is one of the things you need to, to be aware of. So let me show you some other gotchas now. Sometimes we get non-manifold surfaces. So let's assume I have this uh, polygon here, and I extrude it. And I've got create caps on, which will create a non-manifold pol polygon inside, right? It's got a cap inside and outside. And these configurations here uh, cannot be unwrapped. You get another an edge is shared by more than two polygons. That's because of the non-manifold. The good thing is that it selects the polygons that affect it, because these edges around here, this one, this one, this one, and this one, uh, is a non-manifold. So the way you can solve this problem is by running the resolve non manifold. Uh, right click, it's somewhere, uh, somewhere. It changed things around, and I always forget other. Can you see an other? Extra resolve non manifold. Yay! Which will pretty much just disconnect the polygons. Right? Don't. Uh, that's what it's going to do. That's the only way to resolve them. So if I go here and say uh, select connected, you will see that this part is on its own, and this part is on its own. Now, when you do this, let's assume that I delete these. I'm going to have some fun here and uh, sort of make things look more complex. Now, you see this, this seam, right? And you would say, okay, I want to get this and reattach it to the other polygons. I want this to be a, a, a whole island. So you select it and you say UV weld. Why isn't it welding? Oh, because the normals are reversed. Okay, let's go and reverse normals. Good. Let's go and connect it. Well, well, it's not welding. Why isn't it welding? Then you start banging your head on, on the wall and all that. And then you remember, oh, wait a minute, the polygon is disconnected. So 
make sure that your geometries have the topology and the features you're expecting. Because if a polygon is not connected to the rest of the geometry, it's by definition a seam. You cannot have disconnected polygons here and have them connected here. So select everything, go and optimize this beautiful thing. I just did it. I forget where it is. Right click. Oh, so, uh, and uh, yeah, it's connected already. I mean, if I move it now and disconnect it, if I have it selected and UV weld it, it's going to go back to its position. Or you can use the, um, uh, which one was it? UV Terrace. Oh, yeah, which they removed from here. But UV Terrace, I don't like the UV Terrace. But now it's connected anyway. So these are some of the things you need to be aware of. And uh, cutting things and relaxing and cutting and relaxing is the way you're going to go. And if you go to Cineversity, there's a bunch of tutorials for hard surfaces and all that. So let me go down my list and see uh, what else I want to show. Um, so there was got a... a number of questions about UDEMs. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to say the, the very rough, quick overview. UDIMS is not a tool. It's not a tool set. No, UDIMS is a standard of naming things, uh, naming color files. So let's check this out. Let's assume that this is my UV um, of this object. And I want a, what we do in Cinema 4D is uh, let's create two materials, right? I have the material one and material two. And material two, I'm going to just put this through a colorizer. Uh, and there you go. The black and white is material two. In Cinema 4D, what we do is we select some polygons and apply one material to it, and we get a polygon selection. And let me go to Grow Shading Lines. And um, we can apply multiple materials on the same object because we use the polygon selections. Other software are not as good as Cinema 4D, as we all know. That's why we're here. And they can't handle this. It gives them the, the chills. So in order to solve this problem, UDIMS is uh, a, a way to go, which is not a bad idea. And the way they solve it is the following. They take the selection that they want to have a different material on, and they move it to the adjacent UV tile. Now, funny enough, this is 0 to 1, but there is a tile at 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 on the uh, U and the same for the V. If I move this 100% that way, so I go here and type 1.2, not 10, 1.2, boop. This is in the same position it was, plus one tile. Now, mind you, a bit of a digression. When you go to your uh, texture tag and you go to the offset U and offset V, this is exactly what this does. It moves things. Look at that. If I move it 100%, it's going to go backwards 100%. If I go minus 100%, it goes the other way. Yeah, you, so, can, you can deactivate tiling. That would make it more visible. I could, but I won't because you just said it and I want to <laughs> I'm going to be in full control. I'm a control freak. So I've offsetted this by one. And the way UDIMS uh, works is instead of applying the other texture, the color texture, to a polygon selection, what they do is the texture in its name. So if you go here and you find the image, this is called UV Grid 01A2KPNG. They add some sort of numeric st standardized. If you go and, uh, and, and search for UDIMS, uh, you, you add, let's say, what it, if it's, uh, let's say, albedo, or if it's, there's a naming sequence which is becoming standardized. And then you put the, the tile. So this is on the U tile uh, one and V tile uh, four. And the naming informs the program, whatever that program is, to go and load that image in the offsetted version of the UVs. And of course, as Jonas already said, without tile, because tiling will repeat the same texture on and on and on and on. So it's just a naming convention where if a program that's loading this file reads this, it knows what offset it needs to use 
in order to read it. So here's, you see it's black now, right? It's, it's, I want to make this show the, oh, I'm going to, I've deleted this here. Oops. Let me just fix the name because it, it lost the file. There you go. Although it's applied, you can't see it because I turned off the tiling. If I go to this and make it minus 100, not this one. What am I looking at? Is it that one? Nope. Zero. This is the color material. The other one is plus 100. Plus 100? Oh, is it still? What, what did I just do? Um, I've got two materials. One is applied. Anyway, you get the, you, you understand the, the concept here. So no tiling. Uh, I want this one over here. I don't, oh yeah. That's polygons. 100. Yeah. There you go. So you need to offset this, which is gray, to minus 100. Plus 100. There you go. I found it. You need to offset the opposite way. So UDIMS, the naming of the file, informs the UV texture how much to offset this number. And this is anyone that does uh, Python uh, can actually do it. When you're loading a file that has a certain naming convention, it can offset this number to whatever the naming is. If it's a U2, it takes the U and multiplies it by 100%. If it's V, it multiplies. So that's not even a, a very hard thing to do. Uh, and I think the reason we don't have UDIMs uh, implemented yet, it's not that. They need to be integrated with body paint and all sorts of other things. So there are other complexities, but the concept behind UDIMs is fairly simple. It's just a naming convention that modifies the offset U, offset V, uh, in order for a material to know which adjacent tile to, to read. And I think uh, they can have up to 100 tiles or something like that, imagine all this. And it's just the material hops around to try and find the appropriate uh, UV. So that's UVs. What other questions do we have? Questions, because I have more stuff to say. I need to say them quickly. So, <clears throat> um, stretching. Okay, let me show you something here. I'm going to go to my nice seamless texture I've created over here. So I've created a really nice seamless texture. Um, Jonas mentioned uh, something earlier about, was it this? Uh, Revert to save project. There you go. Uh, about when we look at this, normalized tile this is always a square right uh but is it is it always a square uh, uh, uh. so what i've done here i've got this material and this material is a square i'm going to go and load another material so just keep looking at this i'm going to go and load another version of this which is elongated right it's it's two times the horizontal and if you are not convinced i'm going to show it to you let me go here. Here it is. This is it, right? No doubt it's double width, right? So bets are on. What do you think is going to happen if I load it? So open, nothing. Nothing is going to happen because regardless of the shape, the aspect ratio of that particular texture. So let's go here. Let's go here and get the stretched. Look at what happens when you load it here. It loads the aspect ratio of your image, but it elongates all the polygons as well. So their relative position uh, relating to the actual grid is exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you are loading a square version of this or if you're loading a non-square version of this. The result is always the same as long as the polygons remain where they are. So don't be confused if sometimes you load an image here and it's stretched. The, if the polygon stretched in the same, uh, using the same aspect ratio, you will have no visual differences. All right, let me go down. Uh, multiple US sets, uh, gotchas, current example, sample pixel, frontal face. All right. Um, I think I'm going to show one more thing. Wait, we showed the UV grid. We showed what's the best computer? There was a question about from a uh, someone um, early. Well, you didn't talk about money, so go spend and buy the most expensive computer. That's going to be the best one. That's not what you meant, was it? 
So uh, it depends on what you do. If you want rendering, make sure you have good graphics cards. Uh, if you want, uh, 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 you know, modeling and stuff like that, uh, make sure you have high clock speed and a decent amount of uh, cores, not too many. RAM is important. Uh, fast uh, disks are important. M.2 uh, uh, hard drives are uh, more efficient and all that kind of stuff. Uh, or just get a Mac and, and get a life at the same time. So... And again, I forgot what I was going to say. I've got it somewhere here. Oh, yeah. Right. The last thing about the pins, I'm going to show one more additional things, a thing about the pinning and how you can actually use it to your advantage. There is the, I'm going to get a head. Uh, head. Yeah, I'm in nodes. That's why. There you go. Generic head. Mr. Generic head. Let me close this. So, and let's assume that we, you need to do your own. Uh, your own UV unwrapping. So we're going to get rid of the material. Nice. So I'm just going to do the very, uh, you know, usual thing where you're going to select this and you're going to go all the way down, control shift here, and then shift double click here. And now you have all your cuts. You're going to press this and you're going to be happy with what you have. But here's a problem with this. I'm going to show you what the problem is with a solution like this. I'm going to go and select this edge, and I'm going to align the UV island, and I'm going to select this edge and align the UV island. Don't worry about the 90-degree uh, thing, uh, because you can always uh, use your tool here and press Shift, and now it's fully aligned. And if you set it to 0.5, it's going to be in the middle. Now, double-click here, do the same thing. I'm going to break everything very soon, so don't be too worried. Now, the problem with this is that if I go to my front view and check out this gentleman, the, the features, the eyes and the lips and the nose and all that don't align to the actual shape of the face. So imagine you have a generic sculpt and you have a, a picture of your face uh, like my beautiful uh, physique and, and face here. And I want to map it and I've got, I'm, I'm using my sculpting tools and moving things around. So I've got it perfectly. But now I want to UV unwrap it because I want to go and paint on the back of my model. I want to go and use UV paint or something else and start painting the back. I need to make sure that my features, um, let's say you have a scanned head, uh, for stay in the same place. And I want to unwrap everything except for the features around here. So here's the process of doing that. I'm going to select all this and I'm going to go and say frontal projection. So now because I'm looking from the front, I know that my features are in the right place. Excellent. I'm very happy with this. I'm going to use the same cuts I used earlier, which I lost because I deselected. So let me go and do them again. Extremely difficult. You select here. You go here and press command control, uh, shift control or something. Good. So that's my line. But before I unwrap anything, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my points and I'm going to say, what are the most important features? Got my selection tool, middle mouse and drag. I want to keep my eyes. I want to keep my lips. I want to keep my nose, especially the nose in the same position. I want, I want these features to stay put. Now I'm going to make a, uh, where's my selection and my mirror selection. There you go. So I have them both now. If it doesn't update immediately, just move your mouse here. I want to make sure that these points stay put. Let's make sure nothing's selected on the back. I usually do that mistake. And what you do, you go and you say, add UV pins. This will pin these as you showed. So now I've got my edge selected and I'm going to go and UV and wrap and I'm not going to auto realign. I just, because it's easy for you to see, watch what happens. Boop. These stayed where they were and everything else unwrapped around it. So I know by definition that if I project an image on this, it will retain all the positions of the features I placed. Now there's one mini minute little gotcha thingy little is that the nostrils here have overlaps. And I think that if I go to view and show overlapping polygons, you will see those little red thingy-maboo-boos. So how do I fix that? Well, let's go and select the polygons that comprise this. I'm going to go here and here. 
Now, and sometimes you have to alternate between 3D view and your UV view, and I'm going to mirror my selection. I have these. All I have to do is go to the relax UV, pin the border points. So the border points are all the points that lie in the circumference of this. If you pin the border points and then apply, it will relax everything but not touch the outline. So now we have no overlaps. And my magnificent presentation ends somewhere here on a bang. Uh, and hopefully you find these things um, helpful. And uh, yeah, I think I need to stop talking now. Please, questions. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think um, Darren, Ellie, and Sassy answered um, like many of these questions in the background. So I'm going to switch to, to my screen now. And um, just one more little thing before we wrap up is um, one thing that I want to show you um, because it might not be like too obvious. Um, we see uh, a lot of objects here that have like one UV tag here, but every object can have multiple UV tags assigned to them. So if I go to, let's say, material tags, uh, set UV from projection and use a flat projection type, you can see that the head has now two um, two UV um, tags. One is showing this, and the other one has this in here. And this might be interesting if you want to place labels or so, so you get a second projection that is in the second, uh, in the other uh, place. And this is not relevant uh, for, for standard and physical, but it is relevant for Redshift, because in Redshift, when you um, add, um, uh, like, a texture map or if you add a noise or so you can define the uv space it is referring to and then you can choose on and link this tag this is um quite an interesting work let me let me quickly show this switch to redshift and go to the notes view and in here let's create a new redshift standard material and let's just add a texture node or a noise note, noise, there we go. And if we set that noise input to UV vertex attribute, this one would be the one where you place the UV uh, tag. And this same thing also um, works with the uh, texture tag where we just throw in um, like a path and here we have the UV channel. So this way we can, for example, like uh, create a label just on this side uh, of the head or so, um, if you need a label on a head at all, I don't know. So um, yeah, that being said, uh, I think we um, showed a lot of stuff now and uh, let's, let's wrap up because we are already uh, 30 minutes over. So again, party people, we uh, have a website, maxon.net, and if you go to maxon.net slash events, you get to this site. You can also get there um, by going to news and events, and here we have everything, um, like uh, ask the trainer sessions, uh, VFX and chill tomorrow, demystifying post-production uh, about particles um, next Monday, and also Maxon Color next Thursday. So oh, let me let me switch to another view here. All right, and in case you missed something or you tuned in late, we also have a training team YouTube channel. So please um, go to the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel. Here you can find all the recordings uh, of the webinars we are doing, um, including the one that we're doing right now. It might be ready tomorrow or so. And then also, Let's have a look at the certification topics again, because we want to um, use the certification topics as sort of a foundation for our um, Ask the Trainer webinars uh, at the moment. So in here, you find a list of stuff and just go through that list and uh, write us um, uh, which topics you want to see covered. Um, please write to Ask the Trainer, one word, Ask the Trainer at maxon.net. And then because we want to thank you, 
Um, yeah, we are giving away free t-shirts. And if one of you, Ellie or Sassy or Michelle, uh, could paste that link again, that would be awesome. Um, there is a link in the chat then and a coupon code and you can use the coupon code um, when you get to this site and then you can order one t-shirt for free and you only have to pay for the shipping. All right, that's pretty much it. And not, not yet. Interjection. If anyone has a, a file, uh, a, a mesh, uh, no volume mesh and all that, we ca you can't do UVs on that uh, in any reasonable manner. But if you have a challenging sort of hard surface or soft or, or organic model that you want to figure out how to unwrap, uh, hit me on Twitter, uh, send me a DM, simplify your scene. I will see if there's uh, something I can do. I'm not offering free UV and wrapping services. I'm offering uh, advice on how to approach a particular type of UV and wrap. And maybe the files will find their ways into a tutorial and we will not compensate you for that. So we need your approval. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thanks for that offer. Um, is everyone ready to be uh, visible? Like, I think so. Right, so I'm gonna switch <laughs> to that one. It's always good when you switch to like, all faces and then somebody's like drinking or <laughs> doing whatever. So yeah, we are going to have the next Ask the Trainer session in two weeks. And this is going to be a special about a fantastic short movie that is uh, called Grump in the Night. So um, yeah, just join us. Please join us because um, this is going to be very exciting. And uh, we're going to have a look at the process um, of how this um, has been created. And uh, it's going to be really cool. Right, with that being said, I think we can close the session. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, bye, bye. See you next time. Bye, bye, everyone. Enjoy. Oh, a quick shout out uh, to uh, Ellie and Sassy who were answering the, all the questions in the chat. And also for Mich uh, to Michelle for um, yeah. Yeah, taking care of things in guys. the background. Right, but now I'm going to close the session. <laughs> okay. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.